Hello Zero K fans, this is Shadow Fury TT3 with an analysis cast for you, and this is actually a request from Headhunter. Actually, I actually haven't seen Headhunter play in a while, but this is a request from them. They wanted to see a replay between them and Clone, and they wanted to know what they could do to beat Clone. Now, before I start, quick tip I give without even showing the replay is Clone is an extremely defensive player who does everything they can to basically not risk anything they don't have to until they are absolutely certain they can win. So as a general piece of advice, don't throw units away, and be careful to make sure you defend your periphery as well as your core. Clone won't attack your core very quickly, but they will attack your periphery. And that's something that's going to be costing the game if you're not careful. Anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's get started and see what actually happens. So this is also a Moon Q10X, a map which I don't believe is going to be ultimately featured in the 1v1 pool, because there's been some changes for the quick matching, and... The maps being used for quick matching are fairly broad, but hopefully they'll be pared down to like 10 or 12 maps, as is typical for most competitive games. And Moon Q10X is not something that I think should be really on that list. But anyway, we have the map right now, so let's just go over briefly. It is a fairly small map, 8x8. Eight eight. Players start in these corners. The boxes are about this and about this. That's where they have to start. So right now, Headhunter is actually the edge of the box, which is frankly a little wonky. The box should probably be more like here and here, or this one's a weird map. It's it's not even symmetric. It's just bizarre. Anyway, as you can see, there's also a few 2.45 metal spots. Most of them are plus 1.8. Some are plus 2.5. There's a couple of plus threes. Well, actually, one plus three down here. That's about it. Like I said, this is a wonky map. I'm really kind of surprised it was played on, but that was what they did. Anyway, I missed the first few seconds, but we have Headhunter not building anything yet, but apparently their BQ didn't work. This is actually a big deal, and honestly, probably one of the reasons why they ended up losing. Yeah, foregone conclusion, Headhunter loses. Sorry, bit of a spoiler. We're trying to analyze what could have been done that could have allowed them to beat Clone. Now, their BQ not working, frankly, I would have just... Honestly, if that happens, just ask to restart the match. I just exit and then restart the match because if you're not able to build immediately you've fallen very behind and clone's going for spider by the way headhunter hasn't chosen their factory yet but clone has already gone for spider already getting a couple fleas out she four fleas out well three fleas already fourth in production i mean spider the fleas are more there initially for spotting but that's still a pretty big deal and then of course clone does have the metal extractors a bit sooner hey, overall being able to build immediately is extremely important it is going to be a game loser, especially against people who are at clones level. But let's get the game started and see what actually happens. So at this point, I think Headhunter does end up building their factory, or very soon. Yeah, there we go. Going for Cloak about factory. Now, one big thing, this is a bad place to put. Well, this is an okay-ish place to put it, but kind of iffy. One thing about this map, in general, you want to make sure that you're starting out such that your commander can build the factory immediately, and then with minimal movement build as many metal extractors as they possibly can. Building the factory over here maximizes the amount of, or not maximizes, but increases the amount of movement beyond minimal. Having built the factory here, or maybe here, it would have been a bit better, but then again, really this map's just kind of wonky for where you play stuff, especially if you're in the northeast. But the northeast is just in an odd position overall. The southwest is a much easier time defending themselves. This is bot pathable, but still, it's slow. You can build defenders on top of that ridge. In the northeast, it's much harder to set up a defended position. So it's hard to say where the best spot to be placing things is, but yeah, placing the Cloak by Factory around here-ish would have meant the fact the commander wouldn't have moved at all, would have been faster. Though, given the fact that the B-key wasn't working and then a restart would have been the better option, that that's going to be difficult. Also, Headhunter is waiting, and I believe Headhunter is waiting because they want to have priority. Best thing to do is actually set your factory to low priority. Like right here, set it to low priority. And that way, your factory will continue to build as much as it possibly can while going along. Rather than trying to wait manually or just manually start and stop production, it'll automatically handle it. And our Headhunter as well has a couple glaives, while Clone has about 20 fleas so far, most of them just in scouting position. I should turn this off. Most of them in scouting positions, very few of them are actually going for an attack, but still, they are fully aware of what's going on. Clone has quite a lot of map awareness right now. Compared to Headhunter, who basically has their corner of the map, and that's it. Their glaives don't even know what Clone is up to. 
I haven't, I haven't scouted the base at all. Like, no scouting yet, that's, that's a bit of a mistake. That's something that really should be done. Like, always at least one glaive, send it out. Try to prevent it from dying, but yeah, usually if you can kill a medley strike or two, it's worth it. At this point, it's not really safe. I mean, Clone, look at Clone. Clone has these two lotuses here, has a defender on the hill. Right now, a glaive would be a bad idea. Except for, you know, seeing what's going on. But even that's not been done. That's another thing. Like, scouting early on is very important. This glaive, that's two and a half minutes in. Glaives should be in your opponent's base by the 30 second mark to the latest on large maps. On a map this size, you should be able to get a glaive in your opponent's base by 15 seconds. 15, 20 seconds. So that's another thing. The scouting isn't great, although to be fair, the economy is actually fairly even. The energy count, the power count is a bit lower for Headhunter, but overall, it's fairly even. Headhunter's not really doing anything wrong at the moment in their economy. They aren't scouting as well as they should be, as they should be, and they haven't been producing as much as they should be, but they do have rock was early on. I'm not sure this is I think they have seen the What the heck? That sounded like a spy going off. Huh, okay. I totally missed that. Did not expect that at all. Yeah, mass VMP over in the north south corner. I sorry I missed what was going on there. Anyway, as I was saying, with So spiders are known. Rockers are being built. Rockers are really important in this matchup. Against fleas, not so much, but the glaives can handle them. Like half half a dozen glaives will be able to handle pretty much any number of fleas. The Rockos are going to be able to handle Venoms, what are going to be able to handle Redbacks, which are already forthcoming. And that's extremely important because Glaives do not have a chance here. The other thing, as I mentioned before I started this replay, it is extremely important, it is of up utmost importance, that you do not let Kron basically wall up too much, or if they do, try to contain them. Because like I said, Kron's a very defensive player, they play very safe, they try to avoid losing units, they try to avoid losing territory, and they try to avoid going too far and too risky. So you kind of want to be a bit safe yourself, but you also want to make sure you can take as much as you can of clone stuff. This is going to be an example of where that doesn't work. This Venom here basically gets a couple free glaives. Rocco is coming up, but these fleas are going to get some free shots off. There are enough fleas that doesn't even matter, and the Redback following shortly after, and the Rocco just retreating. I mean, not a terrible idea, because who knows what's behind there, and the fleas are going to be a big threat, especially with the glaze and tow, but still, that's a lot of damage being dealt there, which, like, two glaives, no reason to lose that. I mean, right now, Headhunter actually has the advantage in terms of military power, though they have upgraded their commander with Shotgun and Nanolathe. Honestly, I wouldn't really go for Nanolathe. Just in 1v1, like... Clona hasn't even morphed yet, which makes a lot of sense for what they're doing. But Headhunter, like, Nanolathe morph is kind of risky in a 1v1 situation. Just that extra metal they had to put in in the morph to get the weapon, you're also adding on like nanolathe. Ar Armor is a better one for recon com just because it does keep them alive longer. But nanolathe for a recon com, that's really risky. You might be able to pay off by getting these metal extractors very quick, or considerably quicker. This is 15 metal per second rather than 10, although admittedly, headhunters at plus 21. Building caretakers, trying to get past that plus 20 hump, and losing glaives left and right. And that losing glaives, that's a big deal. If you notice, Clone has lost nothing other than a handful. Seriously, what? Oh yeah, there are, there's an infiltrator. Clone did make an early infiltrator. I was not, I wasn't hallucinating. There is an early infiltrator hitting glaives here and there. A bit of a weird thing to hit with, but hey, at this stage in the game, why not? Glaives are free targets. Yeah, that's the thing. Headhunter has been losing glaives left and right. At this point, Clone's actually gotten the military advantage from even. And a lot of glaives have been built. Headhunter should be building far more rockers than they are. They're going for a 5 to 1 ratio. It should be closer to 2 to 1 or 1 to 1. Rockos pretty much beat the spider factory, except for fleas. Fleas can take care of rockos, but clays can take care of fleas. So if you have fleas, so clays and rockos together, the rockos will basically deal with everything the glaives can't deal with, and the glaives will deal with the fleas. And that'll work out beautifully. Unfortunately, Headhunter has very few rockos, but they have a lot of free glaives, a lot of free kills for these venoms. I mean, they're trying, they really are, but there's just not enough glaives. It's not going to work. You really need to have those rockers. You need to have that firepower at range so the venoms can't stun them out. It's extremely important to have that. And now, at the same time, we see fleas are going to the northwest, while Headhunter's commander's out in the open. They do have a shotgun, but the infiltrator is coming in. This is another thing. The fact that the infiltrator was here, that is a huge deal and needs to be watched out for. 
And as you can see, these fleas are going to come in. They're going to kill. Don't, they're going to kill Headhunter's commander. And at that point, Headhunter, though they do have an economic advantage, very worth pointing out, though they are starting to excess metal. They need a lot more energy. That's the thing. They've needed a lot more energy this entire game. So that's another thing to point out. You always want to have more energy than metal, especially when you're getting a rapid economic advantage in metal production. And down goes the commander. And you don't want to be accessing metal. I mean, the caretakers are good, but the lack of energy production is not. And like I said, also the lack, the relative lack of Rockos. And the fact that, at this point, Headhunters have been losing units left and right. They just lost their commander, which they invested quite a bit of metal into as well. I mean, they invested 250 metal into them. Which, that's, well, in terms of Rockos, that's another three Rockos, which in this case would actually turn the battle around. Like, going from four to seven Rockos against all these Venoms and Redbacks, this is going to be a forced retreat for Headhunter. This would have probably been a victory had there been more Rockos. Had there been even just three more Rockos, that would have been double the number of Rockos in this case. As opposed to upgrading the commander and then losing it for nothing, really. We I mean, built a few metal extractors here and there, but honestly, there's so much excess that that hasn't been used. Cone, on the other hand, has been expanding a bit more timidly. Well, maybe not timidly, but definitely a bit safer in their expansion attempts. And that's paid off. They haven't actually accessed at all. They've gone past the plus 20 hump, no problem. They have one caretaker, so they're not really overbuilding that either. While Headhunter doesn't have the energy to actually power all of this. These metal extractors are basically being built for nothing, and now we're up to seven Rockos, but all the glaives have gone down, which means fleas would have a field day. So at this point, Headhunter really losing a lot of units, and it's very important to note. I mean, now Clone has actually lost units. Clone has indeed lost units. There are Venoms here and there. Oh, see, fleas are kind of irrelevant. But there are Venoms here and there, and they Actually, not, not really much here and there at all, come to think of it. There's a couple. There's a couple of Venoms strewn about. And maybe one red back. But overall, everything is basically survived, and here come the fleas. So, here's the thing. At this point... At this point, this battle over here is basically going for Clone. Because, so far this entire game, Headhunter has been gradually losing units, but Clone has basically not lost anything. The Rockers are doing a decent job of getting caught up, and there just weren't that many of them. And this entire expansion, essentially, for naught. Well, like I said, Headhunter kind of let that excess due to lack of energy. Getting a geothermal plant had to deal with it, but that was a bit too late. It's very reactive. That's the thing about Headhunter's play I've noticed. It's very reactive play. The Rockos didn't come in until later, and the Rockos even now, they're still... It's 2 to 5 ratio. With Zeus's coming in, Zeus's are an okay idea, but really, you want to have a lot of Rockos. Now, from this point, one thing Headhunter does have, or did have, was an economic advantage, and from there, an air switch would have been a good idea. Like, air switch into probably Napalm Bombers, given the strength of these units. Like, these units here are fairly weak. If we look, Redbacks, 900 health, Venom, 750 health, and an air factory with Napalm Bombers, that would have been, like, a couple of those would have really at least been denial, especially of any fleas. Or build a few Ravens and just go about knocking out all these metal extractors. Not much has been set up to defend them. Just hit all the metal extractors and slow Clone's economy right down. Just secure that economic advantage, because Headhunter has had an economic advantage up until this battle here. Up until the Northwest was completely wiped out by Clone, Headhunter had a massive advantage. It was, Headhunter had twice the metal income of Clone, not including Reclaim. But they they couldn't produce with all of it, and at that point they were producing the wrong units too, and they weren't producing enough Rockos, they weren't producing a nice Rocco glaive ratio, and air units wouldn't have been a bad idea. Now, Clone, on the other hand, they haven't actually really expanded much beyond this point, plus 17. They apparently have lost a bit. But it doesn't really matter. I mean, they could take the Southeast, but like I said, Clone plays very safe. And at this point, surprisingly, Clone has not reclaimed too much. Did lose one of the metal extractors. However, at this point, they have been using all their metal effectively, and their units haven't died, or very few of the units have died compared to Headhunter. That is a massive deal. I mean, right here, the Redback has basically just made cost with all these glaives. Now, it's about to die, but it's actually made cost three times over, according to the, the veterans y pips. Yeah, that is... that's huge. So I'd say, Headhunter, the biggest thing, make sure units don't die, especially playing against Clone. And the other thing is, Rocco's beat Spider Factory with the exception of Fleas. You need Glaze for Fleas, everything else, you need Rocco's. And that's... I mean, we kind of see a decent ratio now, but that's basically because all the Glaze have died. Before that, there were a bunch of useless Glaze that could have been Rocco's. That's the thing, if... if this commander wasn't upgraded, because Nanolith wasn't really necessary. Shotgun wasn't a bad thing, but Nanolith wasn't really necessary. If it was just Shotgun, I think it would have been somewhere around 150 metal. So it would have been another Rocco. And then if 
you were going for one to one, to one glaive rocka ratio, you'd have had, instead of you know, a couple dozen glaives, you would have had about 20 rockos. Well, it wasn't quite a couple dozen, but it was pretty close. So at least a dozen. That would have been easily 10 rockos on top of the four that were there, on top of the additional two or three from not upgrading the commander, upgrading it lighter. That would have been, from there, an easy win. Or at least an easy win to destroy Clone's army at this point. I mean, Clone didn't have the economic advantage, and even now Headhunter has an economic advantage. And now Headhunter has the energy to deal with it thanks to the geothermal plant. Headhunter can actually use all of that, though at this point the overhead of getting units off the platform is actually a bit, almost getting higher, at least for Glaives, than the cost of building them, which is a good time to do a factory switch, if there's any good time to do a factory switch, which there usually is. And that's definitely an ideal time. But at this point, Clone's still not losing a whole lot of units. Here and there are a few, but overall, it's been Headhunter losing most of their army. The, all this wreckage shooting about, that's almost all of it Headhunters. There's a few of dead, few of clone units dead. <laughs> few of clone's units are dead. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time thinking thanks to a cold. Yeah, a few of clone, clone's units are dead. Almost all of this army here has died at least twice over so far for Headhunter. So the economic advantage is not translating to a military advantage. Even when we discount Clone's Commander. If we discount Clone's Commander, it's a bit closer, especially now that it's actually starting to work out for a Headhunter. But Clone has gone for a Gunship Switch, going for Brawlers, and Headhunter does not scout this out. Doesn't predict it either. Which is generally a good thing to do. Once we're past the 10 minute mark, and you know your opponent has a decent economy, plus 20, plus 25, they're probably going to go for an Air Switch of some kind. At least in the current meta. So building up a couple gremlins at least. A few defenders. I mean, some defenders have been built. Not bad, though. Kind of an out, it's kind of out of the way. Brawlers aren't likely to go here. Building defenders along the center. Or building maybe even a razor if you're really confident. Though that's a bit expensive. But doing that would help. However, none of that's being done. And at this point, the Rocco's unfortunately trying to crest the hill. Can't deal with the Venoms. You don't want to do that. With the Rocco's, it's really risky to crest hills. Because they can't see what's going on until they crest to the hill, and the Venoms have the advantage. Venoms can just wait behind that hill, kill all the Rockos, and that's it. I mean, luckily the Warriors were in tow, but still, those Rockos, far more Rockos died than needed to. Even though Clone did lose a lot of their army, it's still... Clone is now heavily securing the west side of the map. Headhunters trying to take the eastern side of the map and getting it, and still they've been pretty good for metal economy. They've just been losing a lot of units. Their unit use has not been very efficient. While Clone's... Other than losing their army here, which was a pretty big deal, that helped that headhunter quite a bit. I haven't actually done much. And actually, this force here could... Oh, no, they couldn't. They couldn't really harass. It would be a suicide march to attack, but it looks like headhunter is going to go for it anyway. This south section is actually the safest area to go. Still risky, though. There's a lot of walls here, and the brawlers are probably going to put a stop to anything that comes through. There appears to be an attempt, however. But yeah, that's the thing. Headhunter... They just lost a lot of units they didn't need to, especially early on. It was the early on stuff, and even now, there is still a 5 to 2 ratio of Glaives to Rockos. It was a couple Warriors as well. Like I said, it's really not what's needed. And at this point, the Brawlers just finishing off the Strike Force. Nothing's going to really be done here. The Venom getting a good position on the Rockos, stunning all the Rockos. This is, once again, the, just poor micromanagement. That is... That's... Kind of been the biggest thing this game. I'd say it's the biggest thing a headhunter should work on is making sure units don't die unnecessarily, retreating them if necessary, scouting. That was something that I don't think is ever done. In fact, I'm going to double check. I don't think... Okay, at some point, headhunter did actually manage to see what's going on inside Clone's base. Didn't see the gunship plant, though. But they did manage to see eventually. However, that didn't happen very quickly. And yeah, losing units like that is... That's an easy way to lose the game. I mean, 0k often seems like the sort of game where armies go at each other, die, and then new armies come in to replace them. But players who know, especially like Clone and Golda does this as well, if you know how to keep your units alive, you're going to have a much easier time winning. It's difficult to do, especially since you have to pull back from battles where it feels like, I have to win, I have to kill these mechs, I have to destroy these solar plants, I have to destroy my opponent's economy, otherwise they're going to outpace me. It can be intimidating to see your opponent's economy and thinking, I have to destroy their economy, their economy has to die faster than mine grows. Yeah, that's an important thing to do, but if you're losing units in the process, you're giving them reclaim, and you're making it so that their army gets bigger than yours. Which is what's happening so far. Now, Clone does have to deal with this, but this is once again reactive play, as I mentioned before. And now, finally, we see an airplane plant, but that seems to be as a reaction to the Brawlers. 
not as a prediction or as an advanced play, which, like I said, Headhunter could have gotten away with about five minutes ago. Headhunter had the economic advantage at the H10 minimum mark. They could have gone for an air switch. They could have gone for just Ravens, really. Phoenixes or Ravens, either one. But Phoen Ravens would have, are generally more versatile, and in this case, they're very versatile because you can bomb out Brawlers, and Headhunter isn't going to be doing that, by the way. Bit of a spoiler, Headhunter doesn't seem to realize that you can actually bomb Brawlers, bomb gunships in general with Ravens. That's a thing you can do. It's maybe something that's a little bit of a weird, hacky kind of thing. It actually, it makes sense in terms of the physics, but it doesn't really make perfect sense in terms of game design. But yeah, you can actually do that. It's a little bit weird. But it is totally possible. And it isn't taken advantage of. And once again, we see Headhunter basically walking a bunch of units to their death. And another Infiltrator shot off, although... I mean, this Infiltrator... This Infiltrator has been a huge thing for Krillin this entire game. I'm surprised Headhunter has hunt, really done a whole lot to try to hunt it down. I'm not even sure they're totally aware that there is an Infiltrator, but that Infiltrator has... I think that's the same one. Yeah, there's only been one from the looks of it. I don't see any corpses in the ground, which wouldn't likely see. It'd be a needle in a haystack problem, but still. This Infiltrator... This Infiltrator has been a massive deal. That has probably more than anything given Krillin the game. Just, I mean, it killed the commander early on, which is a bit of a big blow for Headhunter, if, if morale for nothing else. And other than that, that I mean, just going around, taking out units here and there, and a strike force attempting to come in, but at this point, Headhunter really is not going to do much. Some of them will die to defenders, the rest will die to brawlers. And Swifts are being built up, but this is where Ravens are probably a bit more useful. But then again, all these defenders have already been built. The, the opportunity window has long since closed. The Swifts are a not bad idea. They aren't a great idea. They're just... They're not terrible because they're anti-air, but at the same time, Brawlers are such heavy units, and there's so many defenders around the map. And at this point, enough Fleas coming here. Clone just sacrificing the Fleas to get rid of these defenders, which... Not a terrible idea. Not a necessarily great idea, but you know what? That was worth it. That was totally worth it. I mean, Fleas are 20 metal each, while Defenders are 80 metal each. That was worth it. And Swift's coming in here to relatively little defended area, but even then, it's going to be tough. Might be able to get rid of maybe one... No, not even one Brawler. 2,800 health. Bearing in mind, Ravens deal 800 damage a shot. Swift's deal... How much damage does Swift deal, anyway? Swift's deal 135 damage per missile. Yeah, they're going to kill one Brawler, and that's about it, and... Looks like at least half a dozen of them have died in the process. Yeah, that's basically, that's been the theme this entire game. Headhunter has been throwing units away, and Clone hasn't. Clone, they had their units checkmated in the center of the map. That's the only time, pretty much, that Clone has lost units. They lost, they lost a couple of Venoms over in the northwest, but that was a very successful battle overall. And they lost that in the middle. But otherwise, Clone has just, they haven't lost anything. They've been playing this like a tactics game. And that's how they generally play. The thing with Clone, like I said, very safe player. Does not try to, does not throw units away. I mean, the flea's notwithstanding. But generally doesn't throw units away. Doesn't attack when they know they can't win, or when they aren't sure they can win. And their games, yeah, they can last a little while, but they are patient. They have a good sense of where they can attack, when they can attack. And they take advantage of that when they can. So at this point, Clone is way ahead militarily. I mean, it says 7.9k on from a 6.7k, and there is the commander in play, but... Five brawlers, all of which are getting repaired, compared to... Okay, a dozen... dozen gremlins. Not bad. When you consider the amount of fleas that are... Well, maybe not on the map, it could be easily built, although crab is actually under production. But still, many fleas can come up, and more fleas have been built. I mean, there's already a dozen fleas. They can just screen this entire area for gremlins if they have to. And if the gremlins start shooting, the fleas can kill them. And the Swifts, there's, what, nine of them? Barely? Eight of them? There's really not much going for Headhunter at this point, militarily. I mean, they're building with the cannon. They have the Ravens, but now the Ravens going for this Stinger, which really they only need four. And like I said, the Brawlers are the main target. One of them goes down in the process. Actually, two of them go down in the process. That's 600 metal right there. I mean, Clone has built up very solid anti-air defenses. It just... These brawlers have this whole center area locked down. Attacking the periphery wouldn't be a terrible idea, and that's exactly what Headhunter is doing, but at this point, Headhunter would probably be best served... I guess, let's think about this. Pause and think. This is an analysis stream, and that's how I work. So Headhunter right now going for hammers. 
I totally disagree with this because these brawlers will rip them to shreds. Get rid of the brawlers, then worry about hammers. Otherwise, yeah, it's an okay idea given the amount of artillery, though. They're all defenders, so the warriors work okay. Warriors and Zeus's will work okay in that case. Otherwise, the ravens being used against the brawlers is probably a better option than being used against anything else. The brawlers, especially when they move forward, being hit by ravens, just take one of them out for free at a time. It would just, it would thin out the numbers. I mean, brawlers are two and a half times the cost. It's 760 metal, 300 metal. And it takes about, it takes four ravens to kill the brawler. So basically, as long as the ravens don't die killing the brawler, that's more than worth it. Let's do that every time, and the brawlers just, the numbers thin out as the raven numbers increase, and as they increase, they can be a bit more daring. And of course, as the brawler numbers decrease, then hammers are more useful, Zeus and warrior more useful. You can go around smashing up the defenders. But at this point, it looks like Headhunter's not even building anything more at the air plant. They're focusing entirely on the Clokebot factory. They have plus 40 at this point, the plus 40 metal, which isn't bad. That's a pretty decent number, but this, but no one's pulling ahead. They are building up decently along the southeast, but really they are very much paying for their early mistakes. Having lost the units early on in the game, they've still not been in a great position. This northwest side, they have no control over. That was massive economic advantage they couldn't take advantage of as well. They couldn't capitalize on it as well. They're surprisingly even given those early mistakes, but at this point, if they can't get the brawler numbers down, that's kind of game. And like I said, these gremlins not doing too well. They, they tried. They dealt some damage. Couldn't actually kill anything. Another brawler is going to go down, however. But that's going to be about it. The rest of them, it's just going to be a bunch of swift deaths. A headhunter, once again, being way too daring with these things. This cobra is not a joke. Defenders are kind of a joke. Cobras are not. And the chainsaw coming up on top of that. The center area is completely a no-fly zone. Just do not even try. The only way the brawlers are even at all touchable is if... Actually, get this, this play. So yeah, the chainsaw goes over here. The brawlers are almost completely untouchable. The ravens, if there was five or six of them, might be able to kill one brawler at the loss of one raven each time. That's about it. And it looks like the ravens themselves are trying to get rid of some of the units on the ground, which that's what Rockos are for. Of which there are too few. And also too few glaives. There's nothing really to support any of this stuff. And also the raven being just let out there. It's just really poor micromanagement. And Headhunter, at the same time, has been taking the south, the northwest. That's good. They took, it, they took the northwest, taking that out. They're reclaiming all this stuff, turning it into more units, mostly Swiss, however, which I don't think is the best option. They had the advantage of being able to turbo out of there. That hasn't been used very well, but they do have that option. And more gremlins, which once again are basically just becoming part of a larger and larger scrap even in the center of the map. Like brawlers, pretty much kill gremlins, as is fairly obvious. Like I said, Ravens basically kill Brawlers, but it's a little bit tricky to pull off because of the fact that you do have the Chainsaw here. But I mean, Swifts screening for Ravens wouldn't be a terrible idea. But they'd lose a couple Swifts in the process. It is just a really tough position overall. I'd almost recommend going for another Ground Factory. Probably Hovercraft for Flail. Or maybe Spider for... No, Spider for Tarantula is a bit too expensive. Hovercraft for Flail is like 300... And that would take out the Brawlers and make three shots, I think, if I recall correctly. 300 metal for the Flail. Basically the same attack power as the bomber, more or less, but without the risk of being killed by the chainsaw and cobra and all that stuff. And while at the same time, this attack over to the west does continue. No one taking a lot of damage in their periphery, but I don't think they care. I mean, they have. They've got 6,000 metal worth of brawlers. And one thing I always, well, I don't always point out, but something I really been trying to point out and mention. Here's the thing. Headhunters attacking the southwest here. They're getting rid of the economy. They might get rid of the production, too. They actually will get rid of the production. They will kill this factory with bombers. But, here's the thing. These brawlers are on Headhunter's doorstep. They're smashing up the solar collector, they'll smash up the geothermal plant. They're pretty much going to tear apart everything. This is basically game. Now, here's the thing about destroying your opponent's economy. Economy is deferred production, and production is deferred military. That means, if you destroy your opponent's production, their future military is going to suffer from that. If you destroy your opponent's economy, their future production, and thus the next step future military, will suffer from that. If you destroy your opponent's military and <laughs> Detrino de pointing out spam and glaives, yeah, that wouldn't actually be a bad idea at this point. There aren't very many. Actually, there aren't any venoms. There's a few redbacks. I don't think there are any venoms on field. 
Yeah, Glaze would be a great idea in this situation. I mean, yeah, the Brawlers would be able to deal a fair amount of damage, but they'd just be able to swarm everything else. Take care of the anti-air defenses, and then from there, that would give the Ravens a huge amount of room to get rid of the Brawlers. But anyway, back to my previous spiel. The, the thing with... The thing with getting rid of your opponent's production when their military is on your doorstep is that's too late. This you have to be concerned about. If you kill their military without destroying their production, you've destroyed their present military, which is useful, but they're going to have new military. If you destroy the production without destroying their military, if you can't destroy their military, they still win. I, they only need the military to win. They don't need their production if their military is good enough to take the game on its own. And actually, I should probably drop this down. Yeah, 10k compared to 5k. It's a little under double the military thanks to the commander, kind of skewing the numbers. Still, this is actually a position where the Ravens would be able to basically kill these for nearly free. At the right angle, they would be able to take out one or two. There's six Ravens right now. Yeah, they'd be able to take out a Brawler easily. Just do what, run one each. If there was, if there had previously been built an air repair rearm pad, that would work nicely as well. Because that would mean there'd be pretty quick cycles between attacks and the Brawler numbers would be thinned out fairly quickly. Headhunter still is the... They're still pretty healthy economically. Even if they lost the geothermal plant, their metal is still pretty healthy. And their power is still pretty healthy. So all they'd have to do is get rid of the brawlers, and they're on a decent path to get rid of production, despite the earlier mistakes. Despite the fact that they did lose a lot of units early on, they're actually not in a terrible position. And I gotta talk to Carper about that. Seriously, this should just do ellipses. Anyway. Clone is, however pretty much in a position to win right now. These Ravens are not being used. This is where it'd be a big deal. If they use the Ravens to kill the Brawlers, and there was a repair rearm pad in order to speed up the cycles of killing the Brawlers, that would make a huge difference. But at this point, the Ravens are going down to kill the Spider Factory, which at this point is too late. Just, it's far too late. And this this attack here getting stopped short as well by Venoms. But still, the Venoms are pr pretty few and far between compared to the amount of Glaze that could rush in here. If all this metal was pushed into the four dozen glaives just spamming down here that would deal a fair amount of damage but I think at this point even then that's just a long shot compared to what could have been done to thin out the brawler numbers with the ravens attacking this factory here I can kind of see why the gunship plant would have been a better option though I mean it would have been a bit more attention because we would have had to see oh hey the gunship plant's right there and it was it was shift target but that should have been the primary target just get rid of the gunship plant. At least that way you can thin out the brawler numbers without worrying about new brawlers taking their place. Because the brawlers are the real thing that has this match unlock. I mean, most of Clone's military. Out of Clone's 11,000 military, 7.5 of it is brawlers. And the remainder is basically a crab. Like a crab, three backs, three venoms, and nearly a dozen brawlers. Clone has a lot of brawlers. And that's the thing, is... Clones managed to keep them alive, and for the most part, Clones managed to keep their army, the rest of their army alive long enough to get that gunship land and keep it safe. And then get the Brawlers, that basically took this match. But yeah, Ravens can hit Brawlers, that's a huge deal as far as thinning out their numbers goes. And also, like I said, Hover Switch from here would have been risky for the Flails. I'm trying to think what else there is. For bots, not much. Archangels, maybe, but they're really expensive. They're about the same cost as Brawlers. I mean, they have pretty much the same weapon, too, but still, that's... Basically a Brawler and Gremlin on the ground merged. They might have worked, though against this number of brawlers, I kind of doubt it. Yeah, I would say, overall, biggest mistake was losing units recklessly early on, especially losing the commander early on over here. Not paying attention to the fact that there was an infiltrator, it's a bit of an unusual thing in a 1v1 to have an infiltrator right off the bat. That's why I was so surprised with the attack in the south of the glaive, because I knew it was an infiltrator from the sound, but I had a hard time believing my ears because you never see an infiltrator two seconds, well, two seconds, but a minute or so in. I think it was 30 seconds in. No, it was, it was, no, it was two and a half minutes because that's when the glaive came down. But you never see a bra a, an infiltrator that early. You, never see a, you rarely see a brawler that early as well, but that's irrelevant. You very rarely see an infiltrator that early. And yeah, Headhunter pointing out there was construction issues due to some issues with their keyboard, which is annoying. Definitely problematic. I can sympathize, but like I said, that's a matter of like either pause the game, pause the game, change your key setup, and then go. I, I realize that's muscle memory issues. It's always tough when your hardware has issues. But even then, they actually got pretty close. I mean, Headhunter didn't do too badly. It's just it was just carelessness here and there. It was it was a death by a thousand cuts, I'd say. And there was a few sections where I 
well, was much bigger. Like I said, the loss of the commander to the infiltrator was a huge deal. There was no defense being built up that would have stopped. Even a single Lotus would have stopped all of those fleas pretty much in their tracks. Or at least long enough for the commander to recover from the EMP. And throwing a Nanolith on a commander, not the best thing to do in a 1v1. It's not really the meta, for good reason. It's expensive. Adds metal that could go to units, and units are very important. And not building enough Rockos early on to allow them to just get rid of everything. Because building those Rockos early on was a big deal. Seriously, that was huge. Those Rockos, had they been built in, like I said, a 1 to 1 ratio, that would have been, instead of having, it was, I think, like, I think it was a dozen or two dozen Glaives and four or five Rockos, it would have been 15 or so Rockos and 15 or so Glaives. Or maybe 12 and 12, but it would still have been enough. Somewhere in that area, there would have been enough to get rid of those Venoms and Redbacks. That would have forced Clone to retreat. It wouldn't have gotten rid of them, but Clone would have retreated, and at that point, Headhunters North expansion would have been a bit more safe. They would have been able to build their army a bit more, and then push more gradually, because Cloakie does have the Rockos as an advantage. Now, Cloakie and Spider seems to be a decently even matchup, but especially in the early game, when you get the Rockos, before Spider player has enough Fleas and Infiltrators and crabs in order to deal with that, and before the cloaky player has the snipers, which are also quite useful, especially against crabs. Having Rockos is a very powerful tool. Overall though, I'd say it was really just carelessness here and there, it was tiny little bits of carelessness not being safe against one of the safest players in the game, like Clone. If there's any player to study for how to play defensively and safely, it is Clone. Seriously, he, they, they know how to play defensive, they know when to attack, they know when not to attack, they know when to retreat and repair, and they are really good at making sure that they don't overextend themselves. But if they do, if they happen to do so, or if you can catch them in a bad read or a checkmate situation, that's when you have some chance to get in. However, Clone basically had the momentum of the match the entire time. But yeah, so Headhunter, that's, that's the thing. Just don't let the units die, don't let your prioritize Rockos over Glaives in the Spider matchup. That's the specific Spider advice. Most matchups you want to prioritize Glaives, but against Spiders, Glaives and Rockos are a 1 to 1 ratio at most. Possibly even 2 to 1 Rockos to Glaives. Just Rockos. Rockos are your key. The Glaives are basically there to protect the Rockos from fleas. The Rockos are there to kill everything else, but be careful about cresting hills doing anything else where there could be Venoms on the other side and the Rockos don't get their range advantage. You want to fight where Rockos have a range advantage, not where they lose it. So in the case of Cresting Hills, going over with Glaze first might not be a bad idea, just to see where the Venoms are, so you can put the Venoms, sorry, put the Rockos around in a different direction. Like just one Glaive, just to get a spotting. Overall though, it was close, but just little mistakes here and there. And you're dealing with a really high ranked player, so little mistakes here and there are gonna cost the game. Anyway, I hope that you all enjoyed that, and I hope that was helpful to you, Headhunter, assuming that you ended up watching this because you did request this. And that is going to be it for me tonight, so thank you all for watching, everyone, and have a good night.